This is the 2023 Land Rover Defender 130 P400 First Edition. It is the longest form of the Defender. You can also get one in a three door, which is the 90, or the five door, the 110. This is also a five door, obviously, but this is an eight seater with a total length of 5.358 meters. So it is a pretty big SUV for European standards. It still doesn't hold the candle size wise to the domestic suburban sized SUVs, but that's okay because this one has other talents. However, right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you that I'm very disappointed because this thing loses the Safari windows in the back. That's like the most trademark Land Rover Defender design cue. It's really sad to see it go, really sad. On the upside, the third row in this vehicle is fantastic. It's a bit hard to get into, the opening isn't as large, but once you're inside, it's pretty good. You have decent leg room, foot room, head room, and guess what? These seats are heated. That's insane. What's not really good is the trunk capacity you have with all seats up, as what you're left with is 290 liters, which is puny. Even if you fold the third row down, yes, you get 1,015 liters, but look at the floor. It's not flat. Pooey. On the outside, it's obviously longer than any other Defender out there, but otherwise, it looks exactly the same. It is still super good looking with all the Defender elements, minus the Safari windows. I love everything about it, end of story. I also think that the proportions are not bad. Inside, other than the third row, the rest is also very much the same, with good quality materials, a very utilitarian layout, smart rubber pads everywhere that come out so you can wash them, Lovely styling also, despite the overall rugged approach, and it's still luxurious enough and fancy enough. Tech-wise, you get lots of stuff, including wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a good responsive infotainment system with lots of off-road information apps, great cameras, a pretty good Meridian sound system. You also get a rear view camera mirror, heated steering wheel, heated and ventilated front seats, heated and ventilated rear seats, a huge panoramic sunroof, and so much more. Under the hood, this one is a mild hybrid 3.0 liter straight six. With the help of a turbocharger, it makes 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to a speedy 8ZF transmission. And of course, it has the Terrain Response 2 system with all the fancy driving modes, especially for off-road modes. And of course, you have the ability to put it in a four low. Pedal to the metal though, zero to 100 kilometers an hour comes in 6.9 seconds. It's supposed to come in 6.6, .6, but all good here. Performance is very good. Actually, this thing is much quicker than it needs to be. Funny enough, it also returns pretty decent fuel economy. I mean, I'm averaging about 13 liters per 100 kilometers, which is fantastic. I don't remember the Defender being that good before. I'm pretty sure that in the 90 and the 110, I got worst fuel economy. On the road, the air suspension does a great job dealing with bumps and potholes. It controls the body really well. It allows raising it for off-roading or lowering it for accessing parking lots with limited clearance like this one right here. This is one of the most underestimated features of air suspension for big vehicles. Most importantly though, the thing I want to point out is that driving the Defender is a fantastic experience. You have this huge wheel you have the commanding view of the road. It actually feels like a really freaking cool truck. And it's like a resto mod thing because it feels very retro, but also very modern. It's very smooth, very quiet, but I don't know. It's a fantastic experience, especially if you like trucks, you're gonna love this thing. On the road, its manners are very civilized. It handles very well. It only starts leaning when you push very hard, but that's not what it was made for. So just take it easy and all good. Bottom line, just like performance, it handles way better than it needs to. We're not able to do any off-roading today, but obviously being a Defender, it's very good off-road. However, being the 130 Defender, it has a longer wheelbase, which is now over three meters. That means that the ramp breakover angle is worse. So yeah, it's not gonna be able to follow the other Defenders. And probably if you ever get stuck in mud or something, it's gonna be a lot harder to pull it out because it weighs like 2.6 tons or something like that. But you know what? Being a Defender alone means that it's going to be pretty damn good off-road. Prices in Canada for this exact model start at $100,850. This one as tested is $105,240, which makes it not that bad. I mean, yeah, it is a lot of money. And I can think of maybe like 
a Yukon AT4 that's kind of similar and cheaper, but can it do everything a Defender does? Probably not. The rest of its rivals are obviously a lot more money, so not too bad with uh, the pricing here. Overall score is 9 out of 10 for this excellent machine, and yes, reliability history is not in its favor, but let's hope that they've improved. So that's pretty much it for today with the Defender 130. If you'd like to watch the video of our Defender 90, click up there. If you want to watch our video for the Defender 110, wait till that card is out of here and then click the next one, which is the 110. Most importantly, please leave us a like, a comment, tell us what you think about this car, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, we need the subscriptions, but be well, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Perfect, perfect.